morning, ladies. Git constitutes a distributed version control system, leveraging directed acyclic graph-based repositories, enabling nonlinear development workflows through branching and merging. Oh my god, shut the hell up and speak normally! Git is a development platform that watches over your project and will notice and track any changes made to your local files. This can be extremely helpful during development, as being able to track and if needed revert changes prevents most cases of catastrophic failure. Git is structured in repositories, and each of these repositories has branches and commits. Repositories, or repos, are the folders, or directory if you're a fucking nerd, that is considered the main working directory of your project. The main working directory would be considered the start of the repository, and Git will track any changes made to any of the files that are inside of the working directory. Git is a CLI, or command line interface, which is a program that is interfaced through the command prompt. When you create a project, you can use the git init command to initialize a repository in your working directory. After you initialize a project, Git starts to track your changes. When you make changes to a file, these changes are considered unstaged, meaning that they can be reverted at any time needed. But when you're done making changes, you can Git add these files to the stage and Git commit them to lock them in. And I know you all have bowling balls for brains, so let me break it down for you with an example. Here, I have a simple React application. This here is the base working directory, and everything inside this folder is tracked by Git, even the files that are automatically generated by your package manager. So make sure that you keep your Git ignore file up to date. And inside the source folder, I would expect to see all the code that I would write myself. And let's say I haven't made any edits yet, this folder is still considered up to date. And if I were to make a new file, let's call it privacypolicy.html, the addition would be automatically noticed by Git. And for shits and giggles, let's also edit the index.html file. So now we have two edits that are considered unstaged, the addition of the file and only the edits made to the index.html file. We would then run the git add command and pass each of their file names in as parameters. This brings our files into our git stage. I usually run git add star, which adds every file in the repository, but this really isn't a good idea when working in large teams as it can get somewhat confusing. And from there, we can run the git commit command and include a commit message. And then the commit is sent to the repository and given a unique ID. Next in line, we have branches. Branches are a way of creating a copy of your main code base that is completely separate from your main branch. This means that you can make edits to your new branch and keep them isolated from your code that already works. For instance, I use branches when creating new features for apps that I'm working on. I would check out a feature branch from the main branch and implement the feature on this branch. The reason I would do this is that any seasoned developer really knows that new code that you're implementing can prove to be kind of buggy when it starts to interface with code that you've already written. So when you absolutely nuke your feature branch and it stops working, you can literally just delete it and then check out a new branch from your main. Git is pretty cool, but all the garbage, unreadable, unmaintainable code that you write is stored locally, so it doesn't really torture anyone else besides yourself. GitHub is a remote repository storage solution. So this means that all the code you write is stored in the cloud. This means that other developers can go on the platform, see your code, copy it, and pass it off as their own. But that's open source for you. GitHub's main purpose is storing your repositories remotely. But GitHub doesn't just stop there. It's great for working in teams, keeping code up to date between multiple clients, and all of the collaborative tooling that it offers. And by the way, GitHub is completely free. Also, if you're a student at an established university, when you sign up for GitHub, make sure you get the GitHub Student Developer Pack. It's a whole suite of free software. It's a bunch of free shit. And you literally just give them your email, they verify it, and they give it to you. It's super great, so make sure you sign up for it. Forking is a way to create a copy of an existing repository and edit it to your liking. And if you're considered a good person in open source world, you can contribute your written code back to the original repository. PRs are a way to merge code from your working branch into your destination branch. And after you open a pull request, GitHub will automatically integrate the code from your working branch into your destination branch. But this is only after you fix like 500 merge conflicts. Like I said earlier, GitHub has a huge suite of tools that I could honestly yap on about for hours. But a lot of them are super in-depth and would probably each take their own video to cover. And I hate to be this guy, but leave a comment below if you want to see videos on this. And there's only one final thing about Git and GitHub that I want to talk about. What do I think about it? 7 out of 10. Honestly, spoons are better than forks.